So, so this is a quick comparison with respect to the mid drives, right? So if you look at Bosch, Rose, and Shimano, so if I compare with respect to throttle, customization, speed sensor, torque sensor, this is where Bosch, Brozzi, and Shimano fit in, right? Uh, we are the only one which can actually operate on a torque sensor, a combination of torque sensor and a speed sensor. We also have a throttle and we can also do the customization, right? Bafang fits in here. Bafang is, uh, we believe, all about raw power. Uh, they can only operate with a speed sensor and they have a throttle. That's about their, uh, so, so we cover the four areas quite well. Uh, if you look at hill climbing, uh, so hill climbing is the only area where mid drives have an advantage. So you can see here, mid, uh, we will give them a high point. So direct drive, yes, today they don't have as much hill climbing capability as mid drives do. So price wise, uh, quite high. Range wise, they don't have the range because they don't have the efficiency. And speed-wise, they don't have the speed. We have the speed. So if you look at the comparisons, we beat them on all. Yes, hill climbing, we can give them a few points there. Has anybody ever compared the difference, uh, the strain of the drivetrain, the entire drivetrain with a front motor versus the reduction of the strain of the drivetrain with a rear motor? Yeah, so I'm going to show you a slide here, Larry. So. Here is, so we talk about the stability on a trike. I'm not talking about stability in a bike. I'm talking about stability on a, on a trike. So we think that our system is more stable on a trike, right? And the, to give you an example, so we talk about stability, comfort, speed, portability. So here is one question I like to ask. Are mid drives stable for tadpole trikes? So here we have got how and who will answer this question? Why mid drives have been made popular for mountain bikes? The whole logic was that, that we are able to have lower center of gravity on a mountain bike, so we, we, we want to use mid drives. Well, that kind of falls away, that logic, because if you look at the figures here, the mid drives actually raise your center of gravity on a trike compared to a direct drive. So we, we question the stability of mid drives on trikes. We also think mid drives is blind leading the blind. And, we'll, and I'll tell you how the race started with the mid drives. So, so today if you see mid drives are expensive, they are highly complex, uh, they have a very high maintenance cost, they are unreliable and they are limited lifetime, right? And we have some data to show that to you. We believe that today, Today, mid drives are here, and the direct drives are here, right? And we do have a secret weapon, right? We do have a secret weapon to address that. So David, David and Goliath, right? The battle is on. So I'll tell you the story here, real quick. So before the year 2011, before the year 2011, we had mid drives being used in Europe. Right? Uh, we had the Panasonic mid drive on a flyer and we had a DOM. They used to produce a torque which was only 25 Newton meter or so. They were doing fine. They were not putting any extra pressure on the drivetrain. Well, that kind of changed in 2011. When 2011, Bosch came up with their first drive system. So it was a 40 Newton meter. Slowly it has gone to 90 Newton meters, right? Because mountain bikes have become popular with the mid drives, right? So so it has required re-engineering all the bicycle components, including the chain, including the radius, including the tires, etc. right? So this is, we believe, a commitment to a wrong solution. It's expensive, wasteful, and unreliable. Now, we think that the trend will reverse starting 2021, when we come up with our secret weapon. So today, and in 2018, we have seen the demise of Bionics and Go Swiss Drive, which has again added more credibility to mid-drive solution, but that's only temporary. So here is some more pictures I want to show you. So this is a Brose mid-drive, which is actually uh, 
they did something unique. They actually added a belt drive, a second, so you can see there is a control electronics, there's a motor. So motor has become bigger and bigger in size as the time has gone by. And you can see that the first gear stage, the second gear stage. Now let me show you how the power is transferred in a mid drive. This is the Bosch uh, two gear stage, right? So you can see they have improved quite a bit. If you look at their first generation, uh, the motor was very tiny. Now they have increased the motor size to decrease the load on the gear system, right? So if you look at, here are the issues with mid drive. So we took the data, so here are our data sources. We went to uh, electricbikereview.com and pedelecmonitor.com. We could see that the mid drives, you have got mean failure point is 4,000 miles. That is when a mid drive begins to fail. That is because you are using gears, you're not supposed to use them. And you have a probability of failure, which is also plotted. So basically you can see that the mid drive after about 11,000 miles, it is going to completely fail. The probability of failure is 100%, right? So, so here are some bicycle gear efficiencies. Again, I will be emailing this to you, but let me come to the conclusion. So we did the math. Here is the math we have done. We have looked at the, the chain tension, which is the point you were talking about. Uh, we have looked at the uh, crank arm, etc. We've done all the whole math. Right, and here are the, some numbers I want to show you. So, a mid-drive motor, a mid-drive motor can increase the chain tension 10 times. 10 times. And if you look at the power transmission efficiency of a mid-drive, a power transmission efficiency of a mid-drive, the motor itself is 85 to 95% efficiency. First gear stage is 85 to 95% efficient. Second gear stage is 85 to 95% efficient. Derailleur is 85 to 95% efficient. So by the time the power is transmitted from the motor to the wheel, you're losing more than 50% of the power. So what's the point? Why have an electric motor which cannot transfer the power to the wheel? So you have 42% is the lowest efficiency, highest efficiency is 73%, not good enough. We, we, we do cycling because we want to have more efficient operation. Power transmission efficiency, direct drive, so here is your efficiency. Power, power transmission efficiency, direct drive ranges from 68 to 85%. And if you're on a flat, it can go all the way up to 95%. Here is your power transmission efficiency of a geared drag drive motor. So you can see even that is a better solution than a mid drive where your lowest efficiency is 57% and highest is 81% because you have only one gear stage. Thank you. Here is the torque transmission. So you see this is where the trick is played. This is called, I call this cheating, right? So. You can see here, motor normally will produce one to five newton meter torque. You have first gear stage, second gear stage, which will multiply 12 to 18 times, multiply the torque, right? You have a derailleur, normally 1.2 times. Now, here is the trick. If I decrease the front wheel, if I decrease the front wheel, I can actually increase the torque three times, just in the bicycle, so I can play the game. If I give you a mid-drive with a small wheel, small front gear, then you can increase the torque three times. So all of a sudden, I can have a huge torque being generated with the trick I'm playing. So here is torque at the wheel can be increased to 270 Newton meters. So I can have a huge torque by playing some clever tricks with the mid drive, right? So here, with a very small, smaller than a granny wheel, I can generate 270 Newton meter torque. And that's the end. <laughs> Thank you.